Hey guys, welcome back to Divinium Customs. Today we are showing off a really special hilt. This is um, uh, the first time I've done a Metal Master with this much material cost. This is mostly sterling silver. Even the part 05, the big center core, sterling silver. That was close to $1,000 just for that one print. Absolutely insane. Uh, we have, of course, some brass accents, some aluminum accents. We actually have some heat stain titanium inside the plasma gate instead of the normal mesh. We also have the blade plug, of course, which is sterling silver with the brass plunger. And we have uh, an accurate nylon Graflex blade plug, which is necessary because we actually have a full vintage Empire Strikes Back Graflex. It has the Xactor screws that have been painted and weathered. It has the Otis circuit board. It's the non-patent former with the correct stamping alignment and a vintage cobalt. All that's missing is the D-ring, which I'm picking up next Tuesday. We have, of course, the uh, nylon MB Sabers top portion, which helps complete the whole vintage look and match the plug. It looks very close to an actual vintage top end when it's all assembled, which is insane for a, a full lightsaber replica. Well, let's get into the chassis. This one has a, a custom boot up screen. It'll show off uh, the Graflex in a, an 8-bit form, and then it pans down to the MB Sabres chassis in 8-bit form, and then back up. Very awesome uh, opening. We have our default font set to Crystalline Workshop. It's an amazing default font uh, because it just makes it feel like a realistic uh, lightsaber prop when it's an idle here. We have some uh, scrolling in the, the emitter section. We have LEDs going around the emitter. We've got uh, six LEDs around the plasma gate. We've got uh, two around the crystal, and then of course one here and one here. All of these are pixels. There's not a single uh, standard LED diode. They're all controllable pixels. so that it has blade detect feature to automatically select the font. The goal of this is because you're not really going to have a blade when it's just the crystal chamber, but you are going to put a blade when it's the hilt. And you don't need the crystal chamber-like font when it's just the, the whole Graflex setup, so it automatically switches to an Empire Strikes Back Luke Graflex font when you put a blade in, in idle, in uh, when it's on, anytime. In, in the inverse of that, it automatically switches to the Crystalline Workshop when there's no blade in. But, of course, you can... Sound back selection. Crystalline Workshop. Change the fonts. Um, whether or not there's a blade in, it'll just reset once you put a blade in or take the blade out. And you'll notice we have uh, custom OLED animations for uh, all the different uh, fonts. This one is off of the CFX uh, net website. Uh, it's Tristan Cam. Speaking of, Tristan actually did all the configuration on here. Uh, I wanted to leave a separate section for that, so we'll circle back. Darth, Hoth, this is a default uh, bitmap. This one I did myself, it's a Graflex and it's got a V in there. Skywalker, do you copy? This one has ESB in there. Exit menu. Then of course we have all the different uh, default games and fonts. Commander Skywalker, do you copy? Master, moving stones around is one thing. This is totally different. And each font has a different LED setup. Now, Tristan Cam of uh, the Crystal Focus uh, uh, Net, he's got the configurator. He really is the CFX Pro. He did all the config for this. Um, the only config I did was wiring it and then, of course, a bit of the OLED screen. Uh, but he is amazing to work with. He uh, does commissions for custom uh, CFX configurations. So I just told him, hey, Here's what I want it to do at any given moment. And he, uh, he went with it. He, he gave it some creative freedom too. Uh, I believe he, um, he configured the client's name in Morse code in some of these LEDs at one point. It was very interesting. Uh, so we have idle functions per font. We have on functions per font. Uh, so you'll notice the, the LEDs do different things. <laughs> whether the saber is on or off, and it just really adds to the level of realism here. 
Putting it in the Graphlex is very easy. Um, it's a great size, a great fit. We just remove the red button, slide it all the way up, reinstall the red button. Now there is not a blade retention designed in this. It's mostly for display, but you can just use a longer 440 screw and uh, that will of course hold the blade in. Uh, but really I wouldn't swing this around a ton. I wouldn't duel with it. It's mostly for display. It actually has decent sound when it's uh, in the tube. So I did not damage the bottom end of this. No holes, no venting. Uh, and the top end, I only took the ribbon out there. So this is a, a very unmolested Graflex shell. There's one more thing I want to show off, and that is uh, Cross -tone water chip. the latest update to the speaker section, we have these four nuts around here. And what that means is we can stand it up and turn it on. And um, back before this uh, update with those nuts, if you were to sit it down on the speaker, the diaphragm would vibrate on the table and it would just sound like the speaker was broken. Um, this is the Metal Master 2.0, but we have upgraded to USB-C for data access, but it does use a 2. Point, or a 1.3 millimeter recharge port, which you'll use a, a 2.1 to 1.3 adapter for and just plug into your wall. This has some of my best detailing work yet along here, a lot of different pipes and accents, and of course up around the plasma gate too, a lot of details. No detail, no expense was spared. Even doing the 2.0 instead of the 3.0 was a conscious decision because the client didn't want to charge with USB, they wanted to charge with the 1.3. And there's not much more you could ask out of this chassis. It's robust, it's stable, it's beautifully engineered and has arguably the most premium combination of materials available today. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. And as always, may the force be with you.